Well, my obsession to ride at Bonneville really first started when I watched Burt Munro blast down the salt in the world's fastest Indian. But my love for the VFR 750 goes quite a way back as being a British kid who watched American Wayne Rainey come over in the transatlantic Mac races and just ride the wheels off it. Somehow these beautifully came together after I bought a crashed VFR off Craigslist for 300 bucks and then thanks to my dad, Metric Method and many others, it was restored to its former glory and then I entered it in the Run What You Brung class at the prestigious Bub Speed Trials. Bonneville Salt Flats on a $300 Craigslist find. It's a dream come true. In 07 I bought a brand new S4RS, this same model, and it was the most wonderful Ducati I had ever ridden. It was just magnificent. And so um, a year after I bought it in 08, uh, we found a wrecked one on eBay and my friend bought it and because uh, I didn't have any money and I traded a bunch of concrete work at his house and he gave me the bike. Well, I broke my leg in 2002 right here and they had to put this rod in from here to here with yeah. two screws and two screws. So I had it pulled out and I told the doctor, I have to get that rod because it'll be perfect shift linkage someday on a bike. I just knew it. And so it sat on my mantle for years, for like five years. And when I was building this bike, I was like, oh, my leg rod. And so it happens to be my left leg, it's on the left side, and it has this little bend in it. Those are the original holes where it was screwed oh, in. Oh, wow. And it just works so perfect, and it looks attractive, and it's just a funny feature. power right here. How much power is under that? Um, that is a 100 cubic inch r r motor with Jim's bottom end and a Baker 5 speed transmission and a Pro Charger. I'm not too sure what you just said to me <laughs> to be honest but it sounds like fun. It's a lot. It's a 233 horsepower. Good grief. And what kind of yeah. speed is that? Um, last year we made a pass going 203 miles per hour. I was a, the first female on an American motorcycle to go over 200. Oh, yes. Yeah. Good job. Good. found out before I go through technical control, I need a metal chain guard. It'll be alright, he says. Well, I work as the AMA FIM technical steward. Uh -huh. And uh, my position here, along with Curtis Smith and a few others that work along with us, uh, at the beginning of the week, before any rider can go on track, they have to go through scrutineering or technical inspection. In order to have their record uh, certified, we have to be very specific that they comply to whatever the displacement class is yes. that they're in. What, so what, a lot of trustworthy people here, a lot of people out to have fun. This is the only event, again, I've worked at different, I've worked at MotoGP, World Superbike, flat tracks and done technical things like this. This is the most sharing and generous bunch of people you'll find anywhere. You mean I failed technical control? You did. Ah! Anybody ran? Fail. But it's, it's easily rectified. Just one little ball, job to three, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, otherwise you're good, yeah. Good. So leathers, helmet, gloves, good bike. 
Just to adjust that handlebar, <laughs> everything's fine. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. All right, so we have some stickers. They need to go on the left side here. <laughs> good girl. She made it through ten. Woo. That's a big dream. It's so fun. Wow, Alan. This does look like a serious machine. You're at the cutting edge of technology here. What have we got? This is a uh, CBR1000 Honda. It is? Turbocharged. Uh, you can tell it, it looks a little differently. To start out, we've um, got an air to liquid intercooler, uh -huh. traction control, different body. Uh, we run Olin suspension front and rear, Marchesini wheels. Um, weighs about 50 pounds more than a stock bike and makes about three times the horsepower stock bike. So as we're, as we're running it, uh, Today we're making about 390 at the wheel. 390 horsepower. Yeah, right. We can turn it up and make, you know, in the mid fours if we want to. I can't. I can't even comprehend numbers like that. I mean, how how, how does that feel to ride a bike with such power? Well, you the whole thing you spend the whole time doing is trying to work the throttle, trying to get the traction on the ground. You yeah. ne you never just turn it wide open. Oh yeah. It's all the whole time. It's just nursing, nursing. And we have traction control, and even still, you're trying to just not blow the tire off or, or just you know. You, you can turn it wide open and all it's going to do is fall down. So with this much horsepower, what can this bike do? What's your, what, what's your top speed that you've achieved? On we this? went uh, we, at Speed Week last week, we went 249.7 on it. Uh, our goal for it eventually is 265. question how old are you 15 what what are you doing here you shouldn't you be at school or something so what is this man it's a suzuki 125 oh wow and uh how's she running today i got a world record on it you got a world record yes. see that's why you shouldn't go to school exactly <laughs> Here at mile one, like this one, you'll be heading down the course. You go another mile. Okay. So what we have here, three hundred dollar interceptor, and so far I haven't gone over thirty-five miles an hour because I've only taken it around the block at home. Anyway, we're going to find out what she can do from what you've run. Flat out. Let's go see what we did. Didn't feel all that fast, but any speed on a $300 motorcycle over 100 mile an hour, I'd say, is a plus. Oh, 128.491. Well, that's it. Another fantastic event is over, and I've just raced at Bonneville Salt Flats on a $300 motorcycle. It's been one of my all time dreams to ride here. Now I've ticked that box and I encourage every one of you who've ever thought about riding Bonneville Salt Flats to get yourself out here to the Bob Speed Trials and 
take part in run what you've run, because that's it. And it could be you blasting oh. out your soul. <laughs> You have been pie tapped, and you owe me a mango snow cone. Oh, he's had all that I can handle that. But what's this pie tap? What's that supposed to stand for? Pain in the ass penalty. <laughs> I'm paying up my snow cone fine. Thank you so much. Please don't. Oh, that was a good pie. <laughs> well, cheers. Cheers. And you say never eat yellow snow. Oh, but this time is the best.